Among his numerous research publications, awards and honours, Rustak is also author of Shoot the Boss, my personal favourite, <laughs> Think Like an Engineer and Driving Performance, and the founding editor-in-chief of the Journal of Engineering Science and Technology. Please welcome Mushtaq to the stage. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm really honored uh, to be here. Uh, this is the second time I speak at Glasgow. The first one was in May, and I'm back here. So I, I really li like the city. Interestingly, when I came in the, in the lift, a lady came with me, and, and she said, horrible day. And I, and I say, no, I think this is actually a beautiful day. And she said, oh, that's all about positive thinking, isn't it? OK, I'm going to change. I'm going to decide that this is going to be a great day. So I think it is a great day. And um, I really thank you for the opportunity. I, I want to talk about three things. I want to talk about my, my story with emotional intelligence. You, you've heard I'm an engineer by training. Um, uh, I started uh, the first MOOC in, in Malaysia, probably in Asia, Massive Open Online Course in 2013. I want to talk about that. It's related to emotional intelligence. And finally, I want to talk about the youth transformation program that we started earlier this year at Heratwati University, Malaysia, and they are all uh, connected. I actually want to start with a couple of questions. So the first question is, how many of you um, in the last week asked a stranger for direction in the last month, maybe a bit more. Now, now inter interestingly, interestingly, uh, very few of us ask people for direction because we do have technology to, to do that. And imagine that we have a whole generation that will probably never need to ask a stranger for anything. Now, I'm not trying to draw any conclusions here or, or be against technology. I, thought, I think technology is a great thing. But I think the, the need to ask people and interact with them when um, it is replaced by, by, by technology, it causes some of our mental uh, uh, muscles to, to, become, to become weaker. weaker. I, I remember the time when I was at the primary school, if, if I have a question, I really have to wait until the next day to ask my science teacher. And n now it's no one asks anyone for anything. You Google that. And, and it's great to have the information at your fingertips. But what about being patient? What about really sleeping and thinking of that question? Again, I'm not against technology. I'm just saying that there are certain mental habits that we use to develop automatically by virtue of being alive, we have lost the opportunity to, to do that. Um, what makes us happy? Now, there is a, a very famous uh, Harvard study, 80-year-old study that talks about, followed uh, a number of people for almost 80 years. And the question was, what, do, what makes these people happy, successful, and healthy? And, uh, Interestingly, the answer of that research is it's the relationships that we have. So our happiness is the combination of how good the relationships that we have with our loved ones, with our family, with our colleagues at work, and also with the society at large. Interestingly, when uh, young, younger people are asked what makes them happy, often it's about how much money they have, and how famous uh, they are. So there, there seems to be a disconnection between what really makes us happy and what we think will make us uh, happy. Now, the third question I want to ask, and I'll try to uh, answer, my, give my own answer to it. What will the future of work need? Now, I believe that we as humans, we, we bring three things to any endeavor, including our work. And these three things are our physical capabilities, our mental capabilities, and our emotional capabilities. Now, we have lost it to the machine as when it comes to our physical capabilities. Our machines are faster, qu quicker, stronger than us. Now, we've heard, I don't need to repeat this, our machines are also smarter from a cognitive point of view. No human can beat machine in chess. 
no uh, medical doctor can beat machine in diagnosis. And now we are hearing about the uh, paralegal work as well. So the only domain that we are still superior to machine at is emotional domain. And that's interestingly a domain that we somehow are losing the grip at. So I really think that probably the future of work would require us to be more emotionally intelligent, able to connect with, uh, with, with other people, and that's, that would be the way, why, why would anyone pay a human to do the work rather than a machine? Now, uh, this is a, a slide that may create some uh, disturbance to some people, but uh, I, I think I have to share it. Uh, there is a clear indication that mental health and suicide is increasing. Uh, you know, uh, all, all over the world. Um, before joining Heritage Watt, I worked for one of the best uh, private uh, universities in, in Malaysia. And we had a suicide on campus. Other universities have suicide on campus. People just throw themselves from the ninth floor to the death. These are kids who can afford very high tuition fees. They are very ca capable and and some of the teachers thought they are, you know, they are spoiled kids that had everything in, 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 in life. So why would they do that? So there is that evidence that globally we are um, uh, becoming more depressed, less happy, um, and so on. Now, there, there is also research that shows empathy is dropping among, uh, among uh, uh, graduates. And this has been studied year over year. And I wonder why. I mean, I don't want to blame technology, but I think it's really the entire way of, 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 of life, uh, how we are um, faced with the, with the alternative facts and with the, the life itself and how, how, how do we go about it. So when I was uh, the dean of engineering, I decided to come up with a massive open online course to teach students emotional intelligence. And I put a course online, and I was actually quite surprised that I had eventually had 6,000 students from 150 different countries. The course started in 2013, and until today, I have daily enrollment. It's self-paced now, and there is no day, Christmas, year end, whatever. We, I always have two or three students who are registering uh, for for the course, so the you know when I wanted to deliver that course about uh, emotional intelligence, I looked for a model that an engineer would be able to work with, and and Daniel Goldman uh, model was really that uh, model to me. So if you look at it, you have two columns. One is about self, about ourselves, and the other one is about our relation, our how do we work with other people, and we have two, uh, two rows. The below row is about awareness, and the upper one is about regulation. So you have, you start with self-awareness, knowing about yourself, and then you are, that will help you, uh, hopefully help you be uh, able to manage yourself, and ultimately you have the social awareness, and finally the relationship management excuse me, management, which is what, what ultimately is going to make us happy. Now, there are 18 traits within this model, and there are uh, a number of tools to measure them. So uh, the, when, you, when you talk about things like emotional intelligence, about happiness, the two questions that you always have is, first, can you develop it? Second, how to measure it? So I think uh, there are tools to, to measure that, and there are all you know, based on questionnaires and, and, and so on, but there are, there are ways to measure it, and I, I, I would like to argue that you also can develop it. So the, the nuts and bolts of the course, I used a free platform called Open Learning. Anyone could just go, and within half an hour, you have your own course. Um, uh, as I said, I have 6,000 students, and I give lectures. So there are lectures that are recorded and people uh, do watch them at their own uh, uh, pace. And there are online quizzes. And I, I also do a, a bit of gamification. So for example, um, I, I believe that our uh, behavior and our thinking 
is also led by the language that we use. So if we focus on some positive kind of language, that will drive us to, uh, to be uh, able to have positive stories about ourselves and about how the world works, and ultimately, we will behave in a, in a positive manner. So for example, one of the things that every student on my course has to agree to is to not use the P word. And the P word is P-R-O-B-L-E-M. You, you, you can't use this word. I can't use it. And replace it with the word opportunity whenever it appears in your thought. Now, people will think, yeah, yeah, I can do that. It's easy. But believe me, it's very, very difficult. But while you are doing this, you develop the mental habit of paying attention to your thought process. And interestingly, it makes you uh, behave in a, in a different way. There are also daily online activities that you are required as a student to perform. So you need to do brain rewiring. Brain rewiring is an, a, a gratitude exercise. You need to mention the five things that you are grateful for on a daily basis. And also my emotions today, which is an exercise in, um, in self-awareness. So every student needs to put a word to how does he or she feel uh, on uh, mentally, emotionally, relationally, spiritually, vocationally, and physically. And that's M-E-R-S-V-P. So it's like I am RSVPing. So, and then uh, students have to work together on, the, on some mission that they want to work on, and they need to have a mission partner, and, the, and they will work together with a mission partner to send them uh, encouraging messages, and just to say, you want to do this, and I believe in you. And uh, the other students will, will do the same. I also give the students e-certificates when they complete the course, and I give them e-badges. I, I took that very lightly in the beginning until someone sends me um, a, a, an email saying that this badge you gave me was the best thing that have ever happened to me in the past six months. So I, say, I, I, I found that this is something that is working. So I created all sorts of badges, the badge of hearts, the shield of emotional <laughs> intelligence, you know, the badge of communication, the badge of respecting and care. And some of these things I actually can automate them. You, the system will automatically send them to you and say, Mushtaq has awarded this because of this. And they are highly, highly effective, believe me. So uh, I, I actually went, this is, this is the uh, executive team in, at Heriotwati University in Malaysia. We decide, I managed to convince them to, to ban the P word. So they are here pledging not to use the P word. And whenever they mention the P word, they need to pay one ringgit and put it here. We call it the opportunity fund. Uh, it's, it's growing, believe me, it's not, it's not easy. Um, uh, Lynn is uh, from our uh, Scotland uh, campus. She's seconded to Malaysia, and she tells me when she comes back to Edinburgh, suddenly she, she has to pay a lot of money for, for the opportunity uh, fund. So what they are carrying is my opportunity note. So this is actually uh, an indication of, you know, I give this to people who pledge not to use the P word just to remember that, you know, mentally they could lose it if they mention uh, the P word. I, I do this all the time. This is uh, another medical school in, in Malaysia, and these are the, st the students, and they are pledging not to use uh, the, the P word. Uh, my previous uh, opportunity not to use to look different, but as you could, as you imagine, when I moved to Heriot Watt, I changed the branding, so you have Edinburgh at the back and James Watt in front, so it's very, very appropriate. Um, I, I just want to show you some examples of the brain rewiring. So these are um, some of the students, five things that they are grateful for. So the students are grateful for the course, for the family, including the furry ones, and can never understand, underestimate the sun and putting a smile on someone else's uh, face. So they just do that, and people could like it and could comment on it. Um, my emotions today, so this, and this is again an example of uh, the emotions of some of the students. We just blurred the names and the pictures. So they feel mentally amazed, emotionally settled with a critical fear. Relationally, there are conversations. Spiritually, going on a retreat. Vocationally, planning on planning phase. And physically, walk in sun 
some tension spots. I don't know what does that mean, but people put these things out there and they become more aware of how do they, how do they feel. Now, I just wanted to quickly share some of the stories that I, um, I, I received from uh, the participants on my MOOC. So Michael Sony is from India, and he is a lecturer, but he has a stutter. And he said the course helped him to deal with that. So when he changed the, the relationship with the stutter, he said, I see it now as a friend. I see it as a sign from my buddy that I'm probably going too fast and I need to slow down. And that actually enabled him to deal with, with, the, with the stutter. Um, uh, Robert is um, a CEO of a small technology company who took the course and he's from the United States. And he uses the reframing, not to use the P word, but forces the uh, sort of the, his colleagues to use the word opportunity and that actually get them to think in a more uh, positive way. Uh, Sandro is from Italy, and he took, I actually had two, have two courses online, both of them they're running, one about emotional intelligence and the other one is about entrepreneurship. So he took both courses, and he used to work for a courier company, <laughs> but his dream is to uh, start his own business to, um, as, a, as a tour guide. And here he is actually doing this. Um, uh, at, uh, having some tourists from China and showing them around around Italy, and he uh, he sent me an email saying that you know this success happened just because of the courses that he that he took. Now uh, Lewis is from uh, Chile, and he always wanted to uh, you know to climb a mountain, but he kept on failing. And uh, according to him, you know that the, this time when he went to climb the mountain, he took with him this uh, small banner saying, say no to the P word. And, and it, it was through uh, self-awareness, through the ca capability to you know, understand what's going into himself that he was able to climb the mountain. I, I, I have pictures of people who put say no to the P word on their cars and they send this to me. And so it's, it's an amazing thing. The last story I would like to share is about Paul Koba, who is from Dar es Salaam in, in Tanzania. And you know, I go and open, I open my course and I see this picture, and he said, I was able to get married because of your course. And it's all about, you know, he, he, he was very interested in this um, young lady, but he felt he is, um, you know, he's inadequate. He's unable to speak to her. And it, it was because of the course he was able to speak to her. They were married in December 2013. He actually asked everyone on the course to go and, yeah. and, and attend, attend their we wedding. Now, um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll move on to talk about the youth transformation program. Everything that I've learned, we put it in a two-week residential program where students who have just finished their O level, they are about to join the universe university would come to and then we teach them about emotional intelligence we teach them about how the brain works I actually bring a, a, a real human brain to the classroom I have one I stole it from a medical school I borrowed it I never returned it so they forgot about it and and uh, the idea is to get them to understand themselves more and over these two weeks they do my emotions today on a daily basis. They do brain rewiring and they put the five things that they are grateful for on a wall. We call it the gratitude wall. And they, do, they work on a project. And it's a very, very nice environment that is aimed at building the 18 traits of emotional intelligence into them. We also have a gratitude exercise where we encourage them to write a thank you letter for someone. Most of them pick their parents. Now, uh, gratitude and saying thank you is a very interesting thing because it's a skill that most of us don't know how to do. But interestingly, you know, one of the mothers, she said, you know, I have never said thank you to my mother. And I am so happy that she is still with us. And because of this, you know, I'm going to go and, and actually say thank you to her. So she, she th thanked us for that. Now, I have um, 
other stories to tell. We are doing much, much more things and we are starting other projects at Heratwat University Malaysia and I'll be very, very happy uh, to answer any questions later or to speak to you about them. And if you want to check out my books, I actually write about my uh, experience uh, developing critical thinking among the engineering students and also uh, the stories of the students in my MOOCs. Thank you very much.